Hello and welcome to our fourth live broadcast for our um, Science Lives as part of the Lancashire Science Festival. Uh, we're here in the UCLan and RI Young Scientist Centre and um, I have with me Dr Karen Sires. Uh, Karen, your background's in um, physics, isn't it? Yep, that's right. Fantastic. So what do you do at the university? What uh, area do you look well, at? Well, I'm a lecturer, but uh, my research is in surface science. Um, so I'm looking at what happens at the surfaces of materials um, and also at interfaces between materials. Oh, brilliant. So um, Karen is going to give us a bit of a sneak peek of some of the awesome science experiments that we'll be doing at the Lancashire Science Festival. If you have any questions at all, please get in touch with us using either Facebook or Twitter, which is on the screen now, um, and we'll be able to, we'll try and answer them before the end of the broadcast. So, Karen, I'm going to hand over to you, yep, um, you. and I think we're going to find out about polarised light. Yep, that's right. Fantastic. Thanks, Karen. <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to um, be showing you a demonstration using polarising filters. So, polarising filters are used in uh, polarised sunglasses um, and also in uh, LCD screens, but I'll come back to that um, in a minute. So, first of all, we need to think about light. So you might know that light travels in straight lines. So if you imagine light coming from the sun or coming from a, a light bulb, if you imagine it coming towards you in a straight line, but if you imagine that it's waving around that, that center point, so it's coming at you in all these different directions. And we call this unpolarized light. So what a polarizing filter does, so this is a, an example of a polarizing filter. You can actually buy these quite cheaply on the internet. Um, a polarising filter, it actually filters out all these different directions of light and it converts it into just one direction. So now we've, we're changing our unpolarised light into polarised light. Um, so I'm just going to turn on my light box here. So this is just a, a box with some light bulbs in it. So we can see light coming from, uh, from below here. So I'll get my polarising filter and put this down. So you might be able to, you probably can't quite make it out, but the, the intensity of light coming from below is actually reduced going through this polarizing filter. It actually reduces the intensity by about half. So um, if you were to um, zoom in on this material, this polarizing filter, it would actually look something like this. So it's got um, these long chains um, in this polarizing filter and these chains actually um, absorb the light along that direction and they let it through in the other direction. So that's how you end up with um, all the light in that one direction. So if we um, now imagine taking our second polarizer, so we've now got two. If we were to um, put these on top of one another so that the chains are all in the same direction, so putting one on top of the other uh, like this, then we can see that not much really happens. So the, uh, it basically looks the same as it did before. But if we were to now take one of our polarizing filters and turn it round like this, so that these chains are now uh, at right angles to each other, then we can see what happens. So if, as I start turning round um, this polarizing filter, you can see that when they're at right angles, all of the light uh, coming from below is actually blocked. So because these things are now at right angles to each other, um, between the two of them, they're actually absorbing all of the light. So no light gets through when the polarizers are crossed. So um, I said that these are also used in uh, polarized sunglasses. So my polarized sunglasses actually have these polarizing filters in as well. So not all sunglasses are polarized. You have to pay a bit more and get some, some nice uh, posh sunglasses. So the reason why they use polarizing filters is because uh, when you're outside on a sunny day, uh, when the sun reflects off um, water or off glass, um, you actually it becomes partially polarized. So you actually end up with something coming towards you um, like this, or polarized light coming towards you like that. And that actually produces a horrible, nasty glare. So in my polarized sunglasses, I actually have molecules, uh, chains of uh, molecules that look like this, and they actually absorb um, the light, that polarised light that's coming towards you, and that cuts out that nasty glare. So, I also said that we uh, use uh, polarisers in uh, LCD screens. So, 
This is a, a screen which is an LCD screen, so it stands for liquid crystal display. So you, I'm sure you uh, have lots of these um, at home. So um, this actually has a polarizer um, on the front and back of it, so that's how LCD um, screens work. So to prove that this has a polarizer on the front, we can get our polarizer and we can put this in front of the screen. And as we now turn our polarizer, we can see that when it's at, uh, at right angles, it actually uh, blocks out all of the light from the monitor. And we can carry on turning it and it'll come back again. And then it will block it out again. So we can see that we have polarizers in our LCD. Um, and just to prove that my, my sunglasses are actually polarized, we can do the same thing with that. And as you turn it, it blocks out uh, the image again and it comes back again. So there's more fun things that we can do with polarizers. So what I've got here is some sellotape. Um, I'll put it on there if the camera can zoom in. So this is, this is just sellotape that's been stuck to um, a piece of plastic uh, in all sorts of different directions. And then I've got another piece there. So if I put these bits of sellotape on top of um, the polarizer, um, nothing much happens. But when we actually put our second polarizer over the top, I hope you can see that we've got some really cool colors starting to show. So as you turn it around, you get all these different colors appearing on the sellotape. So that's because sellotape um, can actually change the angle of our uh, polarized light. So we've got a polarized light like this, and it twists the angle of it. And that depends on the thickness of the sellotape um, and what angle you've put it on and various other things. And so the end result is that you get all these really cool colors. So we can actually do a similar thing using plastic. So what I've got here is uh, an old CD case. And you're probably all too young to know what CDs are. Um, so I'm going to put that on top of my polarizer. Again, nothing um, exceptional until we put the second polarizer on top. And as we turn it round, you can see all of these really cool colors. So this is a similar sort of, um, so a similar sort of thing, but now um, what we're seeing is actually the stress lines in the um, material. So when this plastic was made, some parts of the plastic are gonna be a little bit more stressed than other parts. And all these stress lines show up um, in between the polarizers. Um, and I've got some more random bits of plastic here. I've got a plastic cup. Hopefully this is going to fall off. So you can see that our plastic cup there also shows these colorful patterns. So you can actually put glass between um, polarizers as well. And you can see where the uh, stress lines are in glass, uh, which actually brings me back to my polarized sunglasses. So if you were to put these on and walk down um, the street, if you look at the um, back windscreens of cars that are going past, you might actually see some um, really cool patterns that are sort of a checkered effect. Um, and again, this is um, just uh, stress lines from when the glass um, was made. So you can see all sorts of really fun things with your polarized sunglasses if you're prepared to pay a bit more for your sunglasses. Um, OK, so that's all I wanted to say about polarizers. But I've actually got a second demo uh, to show you, which uh, is quite a popular demo. Uh, and I'm going to have to put some safety specs on for this. So this is a, a maglev railway um, that I built. Um, so I'm going to just start, before I explain anything, I'm going to start cooling this down with liquid nitrogen. So you may have heard of liquid nitrogen. It's very cold. See if I can get some of this part out. OK. So liquid nitrogen is about minus 195 uh, degrees C. And what I'm actually cooling down here is um, something, it's a material, a special material called a superconductor. And when it gets uh, really cold, um, it behaves in a special way with magnets. 
So you may know that magnets um, can attract and repel um, one another. And in fact, when I was building um, this railway, um, all the magnets had a tendency to sort of snap together on my fingers, which hurt a lot. So it took quite a long time to build this, uh, this magnetic railway. And they're really strong magnets as well. So I've had to take um, my watch and my bracelets off so that I don't actually stick to it. OK, so this takes um, sort of a few minutes to cool. So I'm just going to see if I can tip some of this liquid nitrogen off um, and see if this will actually show the effect. OK, there you go. So what you have then is magnetic levitation. So you should be able to see that our superconductor is actually floating above our magnetic track. So it's not magic, it is, it is science and you can actually come along to the um, show floor exhibit on the um, Lancashire Science Festival this week and you can see some more of this and ask us some more questions um, if you'd like to. Um, and that's all I've got for today, thank you. Oh, that was fantastic. Thank you so much, Karen. Um, I'm pushing it around. <laughs> I'll stop watching it. It's amazing. You only need to give it a little push and it goes around quite a lot. <laughs> so as Karen said, um, everything that you've seen today, you'll get a chance to look at if you come to the Lancashire Science Festival and learn much, much more about it. There's all of these activities plus much more. We've got loads going on during the Saturday. It's all completely free and we'd love to see you there. So please visit the website, it's just on the screen now. And again, if you have any questions, please get in contact with us using social media. So thank you very much for watching and thank you so much, Karen. That was Pleasure. amazing. <laughs> thank you. Thanks.